Welcome to the NCAA Baseball Regionals presented by Capital One and welcome to Ruston, Louisiana for our regional final between Louisiana Tech and NC State. The Bulldogs staved off elimination to Alabama earlier today, holding on to a 10-8 victory. The host team now has to turn it around and try and take down a red-hot NC State Wolfpack team. If the Diamond Dogs want to win this regional final, they will have to beat NC State twice. All NC State has to do is win this regional tonight and they will advance to a Super Regional. And we welcome you into our respective homes. That is Georgia Tech great Roddy Jones. I am Sam Ravitch. Pleasure to have you with us here for this regional final. Roddy, we have finally made it. It has been an exciting weekend. And we've, we're prepared to see a couple of really good offenses once again. Yeah, we thought we'd get a, a ton of fireworks when these two teams squared off yesterday, and, and that didn't really end up happening really on the side of NC State because they had an excellent pitcher performance on the mound, but this Louisiana Tech offense woke up in the early game today against Alabama, exploded in that game, and returned to the form that we had seen. Look at that, 11 for 39 against Alabama with four home runs and those two doubles. If they get a performance like that, they're going to be tough to beat. No question, four home runs in that game to win 10 to eight. On the other side, NC State, they're sitting pretty at two and zero. Oh. They lose this one, it's okay, but their offense has been dynamite coming into this regional. It's been as advertised in every single game they play, both of them. Uh, this offense has come through and performed. You look at where they've been in the last 30 games, 23 and seven. This is a red hot team, as you said earlier, playing with a lot of confidence. They would love to win this game because from a pitching standpoint, as good as it's been, they're not super deep. Louisiana Tech, NC State, can the pack advance? All they have to do is win. Louisiana Tech needs two. We'll have first pitch on the other side of the break. All right, welcome back. Regional final between NC State and Louisiana Tech. We've given a lot of love, Roddy, to NC State's bats, and rightfully so. But it, you could make a, a case that the pitchers have dominated in this regional, starting with Reed Johnston, who got the start against Alabama in game one. He went eight innings, struck out seven in the win. And then Sam Heifel last night got him through five and a third, only allowed the five hits, no earned runs, and four strikeouts in the win. Those two have been dominant. And the question is, can they get another great start, this time from Matt Wildeson, the freshman from Holly Springs, North Carolina? Yeah, you look at the, the numbers on the Ladson for the year. Four and three with a four, seven, six ERA. He's been their Sunday starter for most of the season. He's gonna be in the high 80s with his fastball, but he throws four really good pitches for this NC State Wolfpack team. And his last outing was against Duke in the ACC championship game with four and two thirds, gave up one earned run. Only four hits over that, but that was a game that was back and forth and uh, his pitch count got a little high, so he had to come out after those four and two thirds. NC State ended up losing that game one to nothing to Duke. But if he's able to repeat the performances that his compadres have had on the mound, it's gonna be tough to beat. There's no question the odds are up against this Louisiana Tech team. The numbers bear it out. If you go 2-0 in a regional, you're sitting pretty. But if there's a team to get out of it and win two in a row, it's probably this Louisiana Tech team and the offense that they have. Hunter Wells has had a fantastic regional. You could probably cap him as the regional MVP if it were to end today. 8-12, two homers, nine RBIs, and four doubles. And this offense put together four home runs in the elimination game earlier today against Alabama. 10 runs on 11 hits. They're going to need the offense to keep it going here against NC State. So once again, the Bulldogs, who were the away team in the elimination game earlier today against Alabama, will be the away team here. NC State will be the home team. Taylor Young is going to be leading it off for the Bulldogs. Went 0 for 4 in the elimination game earlier today. You know that he would like to get it going here in the top of the first inning against Will Adson. And if you look at, at Louisiana Tech this season, because of Conference USA's decision to play four games in a weekend, Louisiana Tech is accustomed to playing doubleheaders. Now those are two seven inning doubleheaders, but still, Nonetheless, they are accustomed to playing two in one day, so 
it's not a big deal. It's a good point. They have been in this situation before, and they have been in elimination form for, oh, maybe two weeks now. I mean, they came out yeah. of that elimination bracket in the Conference USA tournament that was played here on this very field. Got to the championship game and lost to Old Dominion, but, man, they made a run coming from behind quite a few times. Yeah, here's that Conference USA tournament. They end up losing to Southern Miss, but then it's, again, double elimination. So you go win, win, win to get to that championship game against ODU. And, and they were pretty close to, to winning that one coming from behind, too. Yeah, they really were. They were down in the seventh, or in the ninth inning in that ODU game, forced it to go to extra innings and ended up dropping it. But you're talking about a team that was down against Southern Miss in both games. Ended up coming back to win them at the end. 1-2, rolls it over to the left side, charging is Torres, a glove throw to first, and one gone. Very smooth as that play from Torres. He's had a great glove over there at short all season long. This is a NC State defense that has played well this regional. Torres. Would be going in the top two rounds, depending on which, which uh, outlet you look at. Hunter Wells will step into the plate. We just saw him and highlighted him in this lineup. And for good reason. He didn't see too many good pitches to hit uh, against Alabama, aside from his first at bat when he doubled. Did go two for three, but walked three times, scored two runs. speed in there for a strike. Mixing in that off speed is going to be Kiefer Willadson in this start. I said it a number of times with Louisiana Tech, an excellent fastball hitting team. One popped up, sun shining down brightly. Tough play over there for Menseek, and he runs out of room. Starting to see that shadow creep over home plate as well. The infield is completely doused in shun sunshine, but hey, you see home plate there, and that area is shaded off a little bit. Yeah, it is, and, and that doesn't affect the hitter too much when the when the shadows creep a little bit further out, and it starts to get the ball starts to change shade on you about a quarter of the way there. That's when it messes with you the most because it's hard to pick up those seams then. Them so close to the batter, you've already made a decision whether or not you're going to swing and seen enough. 2-2 Two -two from Willatson. Another off speed, missing outside. And a full count to the redshirt senior, first team all-conference member. And last night became the all-time hits leader in program history. Also broke his own record of single season hits. So he's etched his name in the record books. He is uh, one of the best players to ever put on a uniform here at Louisiana Tech. You talk to Lane Burroughs about him and, and really a, a lot of these guys, but, but when you get him talking about Hunter Wells, you can just tell the pride this guy has been a worker since the second he stepped on campus and a really good player. Payoff. That's down. Good at bat from Hunter Wells to work a walk there. The walks are something to keep an eye on today. We've seen how the ball was flying out of this ballpark earlier. And Louisiana Tech did a nice job of making... Alabama pay for its mistakes in walking batters. A lot of it via the home run. Here's a player that Louisiana Tech could really use a boost from. Came into today, one and seven in the tournament, went 0 for four in the game earlier today. So one for 11 in this regional for Parker Bates. The center fielder batting in the three spot out of Tyler, Texas. I thought he's had some good swings today. He hasn't looked like he's been particularly off. It just hasn't fallen for him. Hasn't been able to barrel him up. 
All right, how about a barrel here? How about a barrel here? How about a home run for Parker Bates here in the top of the first inning? A two-run shot puts Louisiana Tech on top, two to nothing. Asking you shall receive. Parker Bates. It's uh, been a struggle this series, but that was not. No doubter to right center field. And once again, Louisiana Tech makes its opponent pay for walking a batter with a home run after. They are on the board. It was a very timely, no oh, criticism is the right word. No, just the uh, recognition that Parker Bates had hadn't really been uh, squaring him up. And then all of a sudden, you are exactly right, he did. 11th homer given up on the year for Willatson. Here's Steele Netterville. And he's hit the ball pretty well. Shift was on. Second baseman JT Jarrett on the other side of second base. And there's two gone. NC State aggressive with their shifts. Time it paying off for him. And Wayne Burroughs with the ultimate confidence in this team. And when we talk to him, as you see the shift from NC State, when we talk to Wayne Burroughs, he just said, you know, this team, no matter what the situation is, believes it's going to get the job done. They put in the work. They're experienced. This is a confident bunch for the Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. Cole McConnell has homered in the last two games for Louisiana Tech and a team that's hosting a regional for the first time in program history making their ninth NCAA tournament appearance first since 2016. McConnell rips one. Oh, Will Adson didn't even have to move the glove and he's walking it off like it's no big deal. That was a rocket off the bat of McConnell. But Louisiana Tech takes a 2-0 lead off the homer from Bates. All right, welcome back. Louisiana Tech up two to nothing off the homer of Parker Bates. And they will put the ball in the hands of Greg Martinez in an elimination game for them. Martinez's numbers a bit inflated this year. Does have the four wins, the ERA high, over seven. But they're going to need a big game from him here, Roddy. There's no question about it. Yeah, they are. And, I mean, he's a guy that got his first start of the season in the conference tournament against Southern Miss, went eight and a third, gave up nine hits, but only three runs. Struck out nine in that one. He's a guy with high velocity. You're gonna see a lot of that, that slider as his primary off-speed pitch, but he is a guy that they are looking for a good start from. Here's the lineup for NC State. Put up eight runs against Alabama on day one. Came around and put up eight runs against Louisiana Tech in game two. 16 runs in this regional so far. The bats have been hot. That man, Johnny Butler, 386 average, 4-4 RBIs. And just like that, Austin Murr rips one through the right side and into right field for a leadoff base hit. partner I can tell you this unless things go drastically different than they have for NC State all regional and really the better part of the last two months uh, they are not afraid of the two runs that Louisiana Tech has put up this is uh, this is going to be quite the matchup between these two powerful offenses no question about it Tyler McDonough the switch hitter batted from the left side against the righty Martinez and there's a fastball in at 88 for a called strike Austin Murr not too much speed over there at first. Four stolen bases on the year. McDonough, 345 average. Sophomore to Liberty Township, Ohio. 0-1. Fouls it out of play, 0-2. McDonough this year, second team All-ACC. One of the league best seven All-ACC members on this Wolfpack team. And the 0-2. Up 
zone. Just got a piece of it. Swung at ball one there. Yeah, and if you're going to offer it, that it's a nice job by Tyler McDonough of at least getting the bat on it. It's a tough pitch to foul off. Fifteen homers on the year for McDonough. And that one he leaves up in the zone. High school All-American at Moeller High School in Ohio. Came in as a freshman and was a starter out in center field right away. Didn't waste any time putting him in the lineup. That one's inside, two balls, two strikes. He's been a talented player ever since he stepped on campus for NC State. And you can hear the Wolf Pack chants in the stands. NC State fans trying to make their voices heard. Ground ball back to Martinez. He'll go to second with it. Back to first. Double play turn. 1-6-3. Well done by the pitcher, Greg Martinez there. As you said, well done. Doesn't rush the throw. Let's Alex Ray get over to second base. And then Ray does an excellent job of turning it. Just what the doctor ordered early in this game, 1-6-3, twin killing. That'll clear the bases for Johnny Butler. And Butler gets a hold of this one. Out to center, gonna stay in the park. Bates under it. So the double play helps. And NC State with no runs here in the first. Defense for the NC State Wolfpack. Talked to head coach Elliot Avett. He raves about his outfield. We saw Devontae Brown make a ridiculous throw from the outfield earlier in this regional. Really strong up the middle with Torres and Jarrett. Luca Trash behind the plate. A catcher that certainly will hear his name called in a draft and probably fairly high as well. So this is a very good defensive team. Don't make a whole lot of mistakes. Can't afford to make too many mistakes today. Not with the way LaTeX is swinging the bats. No question about that. Here's George Corona, slow roller up the third baseline. Voita Mensik across the diamond. One gone. Tough play over there by Voita Mensik out of the Czech Republic. Right here. Throw on the run. A really nice job by Minchie. Oh, yeah. Brings up Philip Matulia. Had one of the four homers in the game earlier today against Alabama. Went two for five in the game, three RBIs. Three for 14 in the regional. One oh from Will Adson, and this one fouled up and out of play. Here's uh, what happened earlier today, just hours ago, actually, Matulia. We're already into the home run trot out of the box there. He knew it was gone. Nice little point out to the kennel. And the student section fans out there in right field. He absolutely crushed that ball. Lucky the rally train wasn't going by then. Uh, the rally train may have taken that thing to who knows where. California, Schenectady, wherever it was going. Eight homers on the year for Matulia. Here's the one-two. And he swipes to that one foul. Junior out of Houston, Texas. And Matulia way out in front on an off-speed pitch earlier in the at-bat. Lines this one over the head of Menchik into left field for a base hit. One out single for Matulia. His bat stays hot for the Bulldogs. 
This pitch is on the other half of the plate. And Tulia wisely just goes with it, lets it get deep, lets it get deep, and goes the other way. NC State actually had the shift on. Minshik was the only one on the left side of the infield. Matulia lines it over his head. That'll bring up the number eight batter in Manny Garcia. And he takes an off-speed pitch, low and away. Garcia out of Puerto Rico. Born in Caguas, Puerto Rico. An incredibly rich baseball history there. When you think about the names that have come out of that city, talk about Alex Cora, Francisco Lindor, Yaxil Rios. It's a pretty good collection of names, I would say. Yeah, fairly decent there. Fairly decent yeah. company. You got some players that have done some things at the major league level. down in the zone two balls and a strike to Garcia batting 314 on the year this Louisiana Tech lineup with six players batting over 300 this season one of the best offenses in the country no question about that 2-1 Tech all regional has made pitchers work, fouling off balls, getting deep into counts. It's what, you should, it's what you'd expect from a team that hits as well as they do. But they've really kept the strikeouts down in this regional. Lads in the 2 2. Ground ball towards short. Torres up with it to Jaron over to first. And NC State returns serve with a 6-4-3 double play in the top of the second inning. Bulldogs still with a 2-0 lead. Loving it right there. Philip Matulia has had probably one of the best seats in the house, right, Roddy, this regional. He's got his, his home field advantage, the crowd behind him, student section, and uh, just living it up. This defense has also been very good this year and a very senior-led team. Alex Ray at short, who's had a fantastic regional. And George Corona behind the plate. He's kind of gone on and off between calling pitches himself and then looking into the dugout to receive the pitch call. Here's Terrell Tatum, the junior out of Collierville, Tennessee. Checks his swing there. He went around. Martinez elevating the fastball in the zone, getting the check swing quickly ahead on Tatum. So Greg Martinez helped himself out in the first inning. Got a ground ball sharply hit back to him. Started the double play turn behind him. Two, that misses well inside. Count evens two and two to Tatum. First team all ACC selection this year. Oh, barely homers. missed Tatum's feet. He almost, uh, almost yeah. got hit on that shin guard. Another one down in the zone. Tough play over there at first for Garcia on the short hop. And Tatum will be on first there. That's about as tough a play as it gets for a first baseman. The ball is chopped into the ground, hit hard. He's got to get over to get it. If you try and take it on the big hop, you're not going to have enough time to get it over. And it may jump over your head on that turf. And Tatum runs well, puts pressure on you. Well, that's a tough E3 there to rule, but. Uh, oh, that's an error? Oh, man, that's a tough error. Would you have given that a hit? I don't know. That's There's no home field love there, though. I know that. Um, <laughs> I think I would have probably given him a hit, though. Yeah. And I, I feel like I'm really a harsh scorer. Yeah, that's a, that's a, 
to talk to you. I'm sure if you ask him, he probably he would have said he should have had it, but of course he'd probably say I should have everything over my area. Exactly. O2 count to Jose Torres here, the shortstop for NC State. Runner on first, nobody out. Tatum's got speed. Won't need it all that much here as that pitch is well over the head of Corona. So Tatum cruises up to second. Martinez just sails this one. Corona wanted it up. You could see him. Man. He's out of his crouch, standing up, giving Martinez the target up in the zone. I want to try and get Torres to chase, but kind of slipped out of the hand of Martinez on the mound. One, two, lifted out to right field. Philip Matulia over and makes the catch in foul territory. Tatum tagging up over to third. It was a pretty good throw over there. Tatum sliding head first in safely. The error and the wild pitch. And a runner on third base for NC State. The always dangerous Luca Trash at the plate. First pitch to Trash. Curveball grooved in at 79 miles an hour. Trash, 235 batting average. Don't let that fool you. The power is certainly there. 13 homers on the year and 39 RBIs. Back off speed pitches. Shows you the respect that he's got for Luca Tresh and the power that the NC State stopper has. Martinez deals a fastball up and in, tied him up. Up and in. Tresh offered at it. It was likely ball two. Two, chop foul up the third base side. That Trish way out front of that all speed though. I wouldn't be surprised to see him go to another fastball up. He got Trish to chase one earlier. We've seen Corona do it a couple of times where he wants the ball elevated. One two was up. Good call, but no bite from Tresh. Yeah, smart. He's expecting the same thing. It's probably a little bit further up than Martinez and Corona would have loved. You kind of want it around the shoulder so it comes out on the same plane as that curveball. 2-2. Two -two. Tresh went one for five last night in the win over Louisiana Tech to get to this point. NC State 2-0 in the regional. All they need to do is win this one tonight and they will advance to a super regional. Trash has Terrell Tatum over there at third base. One out and that's well up in the zone. The count runs full. to count, Trush just, just has to be thinking, let's get the ball in play. If you can elevate it and get it to the outfield, even better, but big thing, in, get it in play somewhere up the middle. He's pitching the at bat and he got him. Huge strikeout for Greg Martinez and his first of the evening. Martinez goes right after him, fastball outside part of the plate, right on the corner. Tresh swings through it, and NC State misses an opportunity there with the runner on third and one out. Now it's going to take a hit to score that run. That'll bring up the ever so dangerous Devontae Brown. Hit two home runs in game one against Alabama. Takes one outside. Junior 
junior out of Newman, Georgia. Called strike there. He's had a really good regional four for seven. Those two homers scored three runs, a double to RBI, and a great throw out in right field to nab a runner at second base. One and a called strike two up in the zone. I think Martinez can hit that spot. He's going to be really tough to hit for these NC State hitters. It's a very similar one to, to the one we saw Tresh just swing through on two strikes. One, two. Ooh, just got a piece. Did Brown stay alive? Pack with Tatum over there at third base. Reached on an error. Got to second on a wild pitch and then up to third. And fly ball to right. One, two. Another ball, just a defensive swing there for Brown. And Corona again coming up out of his stance, wanting that ball elevated. Martina is actually, where is it? Probably. So far down on the zone, it was likely to be a ball, but either way, no harm. Got him! Back-to-back -back K's for Greg Martinez here in the second, and he's loving it. Tongue out of the mouth. And Strands a runner on third base. Louisiana Tech up two to nothing after two. And welcome back to the NCAA Baseball Championships presented by Capital One. For around the clock, multi-game coverage scores and highlights. Check out Squeeze Play available on the ESPN app throughout the college baseball regionals. Some players in there checking out Squeeze Play. Batting cages, sweet setup they got here at the uh, newly designed JC Love Field, Pat Patterson Park. It has been sold out all weekend long. Crowd I think so far, Roddy, fans of. Yeah, I think they've gotten their money's worth so far, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I would say so. The games haven't been uh, particularly close, but they have been exciting yeah. if you've rooted for the uh, Louisiana Tech Bulldogs. For the most part, obviously, last night's game didn't go their way. but Sure. But if you've been here to watch La Tech, they have certainly put on a show for you. NC State, too. A couple of Wolfpack fans that have made the trip down to Ruston. Sea of red, a lot of red here tonight. One ball, two strikes to the number nine batter, Alex Ray. And pitch is down. Here's the Wolfpack faithful. A little nice section those, there. Check out those pants. Yeah, sweet golf pants there. NC State pants with the uh, block S all over them. Called strike three, good location. There they are. Man, get those for the NC State fan in your life. Get them today. <laughs> those are loud. To say the least. They are stylish. I don't think I could pull that off. I was going to ask you if, that, if we can get you some yellow jacket ones. You think you could throw those on? No, I don't think I can pull it off, man. You know, it's... Uh, First off, if they were if they were red like the NC State ones, I don't know if I'd be able to allow them in a house. I think I'd be yeah, disowned right. by all of Yellow Jacket Nation. But um, I think that's more your style, you know, making the make a statement pants. Yeah, I'll rock those. Get you some Pepperdine ones. Yeah. It's Taylor Young, top of the order, 0 for 5 today. Going back to the game played earlier. And fans had that one, a little bit off balance swing, and it's one on one. It came in at 72 miles an hour. Really pulling the string on it. And the one one. A 
Wells on deck. It's just a bit outside. Hitters count to the dangerous Taylor Young. Maybe 0 for 5 so far today, but put a charge into 1 7 homers on the year. Also got those 19 doubles. Plenty of speed on the base pass. Missed that one. Could be trouble out there. Devontae Brown over near the wall. Look out. Out of play. Devontae Brown had a pretty good beat on that. Thought he had a yeah, he pretty did. good shot at it. Couldn't tell. Did that hit? That hit on the opposite side of the wall or did that hit in the uh, field of play? Mm -hmm. Hit in the bullpen. This will be pitch number 40 for Willatson. He's in attack has made him work. Well, deep in a number of counts. He's been throwing strikes, but he's in attack has wasted a bunch of pitches today. Payoff. Down, ball four. Second walk on the day for the Latson just missed low and second and that first walk that was given up was followed up by a Parker Bates home run and Louisiana Tech again has been so good at that today. Happened time and time again in the early game. Stolen bases on the year for Young. Has been caught three times, but neither of these teams really run a whole bunch, and uh, probably a good reason for that is because of the offenses that they carry with them. Called strike. It's funny, Lane Burroughs told us he would love to run more, but he just mash the ball all the time, so you don't want to run yourself out of an at bat or give away an out by trying to steal some bases because the way this team has hit all year, chances are they'll find a gap or maybe hit one over the fence. And one good location. Off speed pitch and it's one and two. Wells looking back just to check where that one was at. One, two. I'd be surprised to see another off speed pitch. Maybe a back foot slider. Or throw it over. Young on first. Here's the one two. Ground ball back up the middle. Bobbled a little bit by Torres. No play at second, but we'll get the out there at first. So. We think it a little bit too far ahead there for Torres, who's usually about as sure-handed as they come in the conference. It's actually maybe a little bit of a uh, to the de it was to the detriment of Louisiana Tech sending the runner because Torres is moving towards the bag and then Wells smokes it right up the middle. And Torres was thinking, all right, if I can field this cleanly right away, maybe step on the bag and try and turn a double play, but. Bobbles it and only able to go to first. There's Parker Bates homered in the first. He gets a curveball that was hanging a little bit, but got on top of it. The thing that, that has stood out with Willatson on the mound has really used the off speed pitches a lot, especially to the top of the lineup. Not a ton of fastballs to this crew and his ability to really changed speeds has kept 
Louisiana Tech off balance for the most part. Called strike two. Again, remember, Louisiana Tech losing to NC State last night. They had to play in an elimination game here today against Alabama, so they have played one more game than NC State has. So when you get down the stretch of this one, you talk about bullpens and taxed arms. NC State sitting pretty right now. 0-2. Speed and outside. Louisiana Tech is actually not in a bad place either with its bullpen, despite having played one more game. We will not see any of the starters that we've seen this weekend from Louisiana Tech or Kyle Krigger, who threw 73 pitches in that first game. But all the rest of the arms should be up and ready to go. Bates takes it low again. Ten average, six homers with 53 RBIs, runners in scoring position this year. And the 2-2. Got a hold of this one again, out to right field, way back there, and this ball is gone. Wow. Parker Bates, have yourself a day, kid. 11th homer on the year, second of the game. Hanging, breaking ball, and Parker Bates deposits it over the right field fence. Once again, Louisiana Tech taking advantage of a walk earlier in the inning with a home run, and that's one that, yeah, Parker Bates, you can just, you can admire that one. Yep, mm -hmm. go ahead and take a good hard look as it leaves the yard. And he gives this team a four nothing lead. Talk about having a day. Yeah, it's just starting. Yeah. <laughs> Just getting cooking here in Ruston. Here's Steele Netterville grounded out in his first at bat. Chase has been out of the zone. That was the uh, third hit for Louisiana Tech. He's got two of them, and they've both gone over the fence. Learn the lesson there. It's one and two. Strike three on the outside corner to get Netterville. So Parker Bates, a pair of homers in this game on similar pitches. A little bit up in the zone, and he took it for a ride. Four RBI, two home runs, and the Bulldogs up four to nothing. And welcome back. Here's a look at our bracket here in Ruston, Louisiana. We have a, reached our regional final. NC State winning two games, first against Alabama, then Louisiana Tech have gotten themselves here. Louisiana Tech faced off uh, against Alabama earlier today in the elimination game. And they find themselves here in the regional final needing two wins over the Wolfpack, and they got a good start here as we head to the bottom of the third. A pair of homers from Parker Bates, and it is four to nothing. Here's Vojta Mensik. You know, Ravi, to be honest with you, with the delay last night, the game is supposed to start at 6 p.m. local time, ended up starting a little bit after 8 p.m. local time, didn't end until almost 11.30 local as Voida Minchie gets his first hit of the regional. Now, I was a little concerned about Louisiana Tech with the quick turnaround, yeah. having to play the early game, probably didn't get home and in bed until around 1 a.m. local time. But they came out guns blazing in the first game and have done the same here in game two. They are uh, they're handling this a lot better than I am. Let's just say that. I've had to go Red Bull, 
you know, <laughs> a little bit of coffee earlier. You got the you got the wings out. You're ready to go. <laughs> Look, Louisiana Tech has not needed that now. NC State has to respond. NC State was up 6-0 before Louisiana Tech scored in that first game. His roles reversed in this one. Louisiana Tech jumping out to the early lead. It's JT Jarrett, son of Notre Dame head coach Link Jarrett. Junior out of Greensboro, North Carolina. Fastball grooved in at 85 from Martinez there. JT Jarrett's Hops, Link Jarrett, and Notre Dame team have been on fire in the South Bend Regional. Nico Cavadas has hit about a million home runs. Fighting Irish leading 9-2 against Central Michigan in their regional now. They, they put a hurting on UConn yesterday. And he scored three touchdowns. Yeah. Safety and a field goal, putting up 26 points. Twenty-six points, twenty-six runs in <laughs> baseball. But it feels like felt like yeah. a football score. Just glad UConn got the extra, got a got a field goal, so they didn't get shut out. Two two to Jarrett. Serves as that second leadoff man. Coach Avon says he reminds him of a Bucky Dent type player, just really difficult to get out. So a great defensive player over there at second base. Foul ball back into the net. talked to you earlier this week. You tell he really likes this team, especially how scrappy they've been despite having some injuries on the pitching staff. We've got a pretty thin staff that's gotten them thus far, but the offense has been so good that at times it hasn't really mattered. Getting word that has just started to rain that is not a word that either of these two teams want to hear as Jarrett lines winning the left. You talk about two coaches that uh, are really well respected in the game of baseball. Elliot Avent, Lane Burroughs are a couple of those. on the mound yeah I think the, the big thing here is just going to be getting on the same page as you have the top of the lineup coming up you know how quickly that NC State this NC State lineup can strike is just want to make sure that technically you're fine you're on the same page from a scouting report standpoint Everybody's loosening up in that Louisiana Tech bullpen. So a little situation here. First and second, nobody out. Bottom of the third. Tina is up to 42 pitches. 
how you go against the top of this order. Austin Murray singled back in the first. He's one for one today. Twenty-four average on the year, seven homers. NC State's had some opportunities here. They got the Murr single and then the one-six-three double play in the first. Ended up getting Terrell Tatum over to third in the second inning, but couldn't bring him in. That's high and away. Two balls, no strikes. Puts a charge into that one out to right. Matulia is right there. Throw coming into third. And in safely will be Wojta Enchik. It's one of those days where anytime a ball is elevated to the outfield, you kind of hold your breath a little bit. It's a good job on Matulia, who makes a pretty good throw to third. Just offline, and Minchik runs really well. Slides in safe, but NC State has an opportunity with a runner in scoring position. Actually, two runners in scoring position as JT Jarrett wisely tagged up at first and took second on that throw to third base. Looks like Luke Jarrett wants going to challenge. This, this kind of reeks of did he wait long enough to tag? Yeah, he's going to, he, he saw him motioning. He wants to challenge whether or not Minshik left early. It's caught. He's still in the bag, so. That look, it doesn't look like this yeah. would be overturned. Remember, in the game yesterday, Lane Burroughs used a couple of challenges early, his only two challenges early, lost both of them. Elliot Avent, ironically, did the same thing, lost both of those. Couple of controversial calls yesterday. Here's the play over at third base. And we thought that uh, the tag call came off the bag there. It's the play at first. This one, Tatum immediately went to the headset. He thought he was safe there, but the call ended up standing. So, so a fairly quick review here. It's going to be pretty straightforward, but yeah. uh, I guess Wayne Burroughs got some intel that, hey, it's worth challenging. So Burroughs down to one coach's challenge in this one. I think that makes him one for four in this regional, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe he saw something we didn't see. So yeah, they confirmed that the runner did not leave early there from second base, tagging up. There's Tyler McDonough for one tonight. Grounded into that double play in the first.
nice block there. Throw back to third. Actually back in time. Back look at a strike here in the bottom of the third, second and third with one out. It's up and away. Pitch count getting up there a little bit for Martinez. Yeah, he's throwing a number of pitches in this inning. NC State's done a nice job of getting some runners on. Still look at the, the stats. They're pretty good in terms of the strike category, but NC State's wasted some pitches and been very disciplined in a crucial juncture, it feels like. 3-1, McDonough takes low, ball four. So, it's just the first walk of the game issued by Martinez, but he's had to work deep in some counts here, and the base is going to be loaded with one out. Brings up Johnny Butler. That's inside. One for one tonight. He's two for seven like, in the regional. Yeah, bases loaded in a game like this. You would guess you're not going to get many of these chances. A little bit of rain coming down there in Ruston. Funny, the, the only game we've really had that the ball didn't fly out of the ballpark like we've seen for most of this regional came after it rained heavily and we got that delay between these two teams yesterday. Here we are with a little bit more precipitation. Butler got under this one. And no one could see it. Finally coming all the way in. Bates. Probably had to run like 40 yards to get into there. And Taylor Young just lost it in the sky. Yeah, it looked for a second like Taylor Young was was almost bluffing as if it was going to be a fly ball on the infield, but I think you're right. I think he just completely lost it. Parker Bates calls him off and then comes and makes the play, and it is pouring oh boy. now. You know, this is going to be huge, Ravi, because if you get a delay, depending on how long it is, Martinez and Willardson are both likely not going to come back out after any delay that happens. So weather could play a big, could be a big factor in the pitching in this game. It's never great when it's coming sideways across your TV screen at home. Yeah, those are my huge at bat. Count. Oh no, Tatum rips it into right field. Void to Mensik will score. Here comes JT Jarrett, and he will touch down. A two run RBI single for Terrell Tatum in the downpour in Ruston. Well, I don't know how he saw this ball with it raining as hard as it is, but laces it out to right field. and. Man, that is tough to feel with the wet ball, wet turf. Matulia does his best. They're going to leave these guys out there and let them play through this. It is pouring. Yeah. Right now. So you can't play baseball in the rain. All you need is a little bit of turf and a little bit of willpower, and you can do it. It is coming down here in Ruston, but we play on. Here's Jose Torres, runners on the corners, and he fouls it back into the net. You can hear the Louisiana yeah. Tech 
coaching staff asking what, what's going on here. And, and to be honest with you, I'm kind of asking the same question. Like, yeah, here we go. There's a lot of validity to that. So home plate umpire there, I think, heard it from the bench, but Travis Reininger having a couple words. And I don't think he was really happy about what he heard. It sounds like uh, we're under may have been some lightning. But, I mean, I, I can understand the frustration of Louisiana Tech. And NC State, I'm, I'm sure they were just as frustrated. I mean, they got the rally going, but, but no one wants to play in a downpour. And this is, I mean, it's a regional final. So uh, it's certainly not ideal playing in a downpour. So we are go ahead and step aside here for a weather delay in Ruston, Louisiana. NC State rallying here. They still trail by two the bottom of the third inning. All right, welcome back. Here's the situation. Uh, a rain delay that didn't last a whole lot of time, so we're back ready to go here. 0-1 count to Torres. Runners on the corners, two outs. And up to second will go Devonta, or excuse me, Terrell Tatum. How about that, partner? So uh, really quick. The rainstorm just kind of came right through Rustin, and players came back out like maybe 15 minutes afterwards. It's incredible. And you know what? It's an advantage of having a turf surface. You don't yeah. have to tarp the field. It dries extremely quickly. Well, at least the standing water goes away <laughs> extremely quickly. I'm sure it's still a little slick, but only a 12-minute rain delay. I think <laughs> we had, to go had time to go down and refill my water. Helps the starting pitchers, so Greg Martinez is going to stay in this game. Two and two-thirds innings for him. 2-1 count. And foul back by Torres. NC State got some runs back here in this inning. Two-run RBI single by Terrell Tatum here in the bottom of the third. And they're threatening for more here. This one off the inside part of the bat, and there's Alex Ray to record the final out of the inning. So that'll be the end of the damage done by NC State. Trailing by two after three. Welcome everyone to Omaha, Nebraska. That one is caught. He's about to go down. Making the catch. This one's going to end up on Sports Center. Anchored down. Vanderbilt on top of the college baseball world again. College World Series starts June 19th in Omaha, Nebraska. Of course, that'll be on ESPN all across. You can watch it on the app. Notre Dame, about to advance bottom of the eighth, up 13 to two. How about Central Michigan too? The four seed kind of roaming through the elimination bracket there to get to the regional final, make things interesting, but just ran out of gas there against the Notre Dame team that certainly had a very, very good case to be a top eight national seed this year. Seems like they're angry about not being this top eight national yeah. seed. They're on a revenge tour. I mean, good Lord, the number of runs they put up in that regional. That is uh, what you call complete, total, and utter domination. No question there. Matt Willitson continues here. Three innings, four earned. JT Jarrett, of course, the son of head coach Link Jarrett at Notre Dame. Cole McConnell has had a few great days here in the region. Earlier today, was admiring his work. Home run there. And two homers, two games. One for one here today. So it's officially going to go down as an 11-minute delay. I'm not sure if you call that a delay, maybe a hiccup. <laughs> or a speed bump. 
yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a glitch or it's a pause. Yeah. Like that's how long it takes to, you know, it used to take to download a movie. I feel like I didn't even know storms could could be that vicious and be gone in 11 minutes. Absolutely poured rain in Ruston. But now blue skies and uh, hopefully it stays that way for the rest of our rest of our game here tonight. On two to McConnell, way out in front of an off-speed pitch from Willitson. Third strikeout tonight for him. You mentioned earlier how that quick rain delay benefits the pitchers. If you do, you, know, you get these long rain delays and you got to take your starter out, but we saw on the other side, Martinez come back out and Willitson back out on the mound. Hey, we got ourselves a rainbow. I'm going to go look for the pot of gold at the end. <laughs> Is George Corona. Grounded out back to start off the second inning. It's a ground ball to the left side here. Up with it is Mincy. Across the diamond, two gone. It will be interesting to see, partner, too, as you mentioned it. The rain kind of deadened the baseball a little bit. Last night after the two-hour rain delay, at least it appeared to do so. Uh, it'll be interesting to see if that is the case here, or if the humidity just picks right back up. It, it will be fascinating and I'm sure we'll get some some batters today testing that we've already seen power display from Parker Bates he's got two home runs today no wind out there in the love shack Philip Matulia off the end of the bat shift was on Menchik and the pick not there for Murr here goes Matuli at a second base. There will be no throw there, and he slides in safely. That's a base running by Matuli. Beats the shift going the other way. It's a tough play for Minshik at third base. Actually does a decent job getting over there. This throw just short hops Murr, who's not able to come down with it. How about the footwork by our first base umpire, Mike Sadowski? Ball gets out in the right field. And Matulia with a two-out single that advances to second base on the air and throw. Tough E5 because Menzik did about all he could just to get to that ball, but that's how it'll go down. So here's Manny Garcia called strike there. Rounded into a 6-4-3 double play to end the second inning. Billitson's been doing a really nice job of living on the corners in this inning since that delay. Were called strikes here on Garcia. Even that pitch to Matulio was right on the outside corner. Hit that off the end of the bat over to, to Minchie. He's really come back strong after the slight delay. And two, that was right over the heart of the plate, but fouled back out of play. Yeah, got away with one there. Breaking ball he left over the middle. Garcia just fouls it back. Matulian second, two gone, top of the fourth, one, two. This ball is crank foul down the left field line. He's going with a couple of off speed pitches. And both of them were kind of hangers. I mean, that one's 70 miles an hour, and Garcia turns on it. Let's see if he goes back to the fastball here after 
A couple of soft ones. Shift is on behind Will Hudson. And that pitch inside. Did go back to the fastball. Almost got that outside corner, just barely off the edge. You see the shift. JT Jarrett, the second baseman, almost lined up right with second base. Here's the 2 2. It's down and away. Gets past Luca Tresh. And Matulia will take third easily. Luca Tresh could have done a little bit better on that one. Didn't seem like he got his body over there to it. The tough bouncer. Wild pitch on the off speed pitch in the dirt. Error, wild pitch. Payoff. Popped up right side. Austin Murr over foul territory makes the catch for out number three. So the strand runner on third. We are grooving here. Four to two, Louisiana Tech. The Tigers live to see another game as they advance to the regional final, taking down Gonzaga in that elimination game. They were knocked into the elimination bracket by Gonzaga in game one, but got some revenge there. Fighting Paul Maneri's will take on the Ducks tonight, 10 Eastern time. Last go around for it for head coach Paul Maneri. Announced that he would retire after this season is over. I'm sure that score line of interest to a lot of our Louisiana Tech fans as well. And you know, we had a conversation when we caught up with Lane Burroughs, asked him about being the, the Louisiana team to host a regional, and, and he said that certainly was not lost on him and his players. This is a state that loves their baseball. We called it baseball craze, not just at the college level, but at the high school level, the travel ball level, some excellent baseball being played. And the fact that Louisiana Tech was the Louisiana school to host, uh, Certainly a, a point of pride for this for this school. Two one to trash. Puts this one out to center field, fairly deep, long run back there for Bates, looking up, and it's gone. Solo shot for Luca Trash. And that brings the Wolfpack within one 14th long ball of the season for Tresh. Tresh, one of the top catching prospects in the country, and you see exactly why they're the raw power. 2-1 count, gets a pitch he can handle and crushes it to center field. That high fence out there, I thought there might be a chance that it it's off the top, but it does not. It's that batter's eye, and NC State pulls within one. I think we got our answer on whether or not the ball is going to fly out of the park after the uh, rain delay. Well, that man there certainly has the power to do it if it's not flying, but uh, yes. That ball carried to the deepest part of the ballpark as Brown flies out. One gone. Voita Menchik. now. Menchik had struggled in this regional and until this game, got a hit in his first at bat. Grounded a short, fielded by Ray, too long. Bring up JT Jarrett. And takes low for ball one. We just saw the South Bend Regional, and of course, 
talking about what his dad has done and just getting word that Notre Dame has punched their ticket through to a super regional and they just absolutely owned their regional. Definitely had a case and made a further statement that they should have been a top eight national seat. But. Yeah, no Notre Dame should be hosting that super regional. It's, it's not gonna happen obviously, but. Popped up shallow left, Ray back there to make the catch. So the home run for Luca Tresh there. Brings it within one, here's that bracket, Notre Dame. Man, double digit runs in all three games that they've played. Crushed UConn, that hurts a little bit personally, but other than that, Notre Dame to a super. Insights continues tomorrow on ESPN3 and the ESPN app. For more information, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90 NCAA championships. The student apartments up there. We camped out all weekend. Good spot to catch the games from. Apartment 303 is the place to be, apparently. <laughs> Here's Ray leading it off. Menchik. Yeah, it's a party there. Back to the brim. I'm My question you is. Could probably make it, you could probably make a little change on the side. You know, selling uh, refreshments. Maybe charging entry to that top level. Some yeah, enterprising they, they, uh, students. Parks. That's where our center field camera is. And <laughs> student section has come out strong in every game. My question is, what if, let's just say, that you're not a baseball fan, but you live in one of those apartments, and you got fans out on your balcony until 12.30 last night? Here's the thing. Uh, it's just, it's tough for you because <laughs> you, you live in those dorms, you got to be a baseball fan. Like, you got to be yeah. here for the party during the baseball games, especially a regional if you live in those dorms. Go take a vacation if you don't want to uh, participate. Backhand stop by Torres. That was smooth. Couple hops over to first. Nice play. was a nice play back in he got it out quick so it didn't matter that it took two and a half three hops over to first base all four Louisiana Tech runs coming off the bat of Parker Bates a pair of home runs today And he's on deck. This one hit well out to center field. That'll drop in front of McDonough. Two out single. First hit of this one for Hunter Wells. This hot streak continues, absolutely lacing the baseball. I think you were right in your assessment earlier. He's probably the um, most outstanding player in this regional, no matter how it goes for Louisiana Tech. Although, Parker <laughs> Bates, all three of his hits in this regional have been home runs. So when he's he's gotten a hit, it's, he's made a count. How are you pitching to Parker Bates here? I mean, he's seeing a beach ball out of the hand of Williton right now. I think the answer to that is very carefully if I remember correctly, the first one he hit out was on a fastball, the second one on an off-speed pitch that was elevated. So I think you try and stay away, you try and stay down in the zone, it's about all you can do. Well, he stayed down in the zone, and this one hit the left center field gap, and that'll roll all the way to the warning track. Hunter Wells coming all the way around from first, and he will score, sliding into third as Bates with an RBI triple and Louisiana Tech up five to three. Tyler McDonough, the center fielder, was playing Bates to pull, so playing in that right center field gap. 
Bates laces it over the shortstop's head, but just past the shortstop, Jose Torres. McDonough has a long run to get to it. It goes to the wall. Wells scores easily from first, and the center fielder, Parker Bates, motoring around with a triple. Fourth triple of the year for Parker Bates. Tell you what, there, there's, there's not many things in baseball that I enjoy more than seeing a center fielder hit a triple. <laughs> you get the stride going, and it is just a thing of beauty. And Parker Bates is absolutely flying around the bases. Yeah, he got on that horse real quick after he saw that was going to hit the gap. Wells was motoring around for first two. Netterville 0 for 2 tonight with a strikeout. by Trash. Feels like Bates is kind of... How, how good Parker Bates must feel right now. He's, he's struggled so mightily in the first three games. Now he's three for three, two home runs and a triple. As many total bases, two home runs, a triple, that's as many total bases as you'd have in a, when hitting for the cycle. Just lop off a couple bases from one of those home runs, and you got your double. And you've got a single uh, and an extra one left over. Netterville deposits that foul out of play. It feels like Bates is channeling the Hunter Wells of game one in this regional, and he went four for five. And Bates three for three today. It was only a matter of time before he got going. Before this regional, he had been on fire and cooled down, but now he is heated back up. Two two. Ooh, just missing. Top of this lineup again, doing the damage against Willardson. Full count, and outside, Netterville works a walk. When you look at the, the top three in this lineup, Young, Wells, and Bates, those three guys have scored all five of the Louisiana Tech's runs today. And together, two home runs, a triple, and a single done almost all of the damage here today for Louisiana Tech. So this looks like it's, at least for the time being, just a visit to the mound at 84 pitches for Matt Willitson. pitches and we're only in the fifth inning. A lot of that credit goes to Louisiana Tech. I mean, Willinson has not been particularly errant at all. Yeah. I think Louisiana Tech has just made him work. 54 strikes, only 30 balls thrown of those 84 pitches. Does have three walks, but for the most part has shown pretty good command. Just is up against a really good offensive team that has made him work for everything. Line drive, back up the middle. Bates will touch down to score. Oh no, it was caught. It's caught, okay. So, well done by Torres, five to three. To our regional final game, Louisiana Tech, NC State. Bulldogs up five to three here. Hats off for veterans. A little tip of the cap here at Pat Patterson Park and the Love Shack showing a little love. Parker 
the man right there has had a day. Too, with the uh, hat tip and the doing his part to spread the wealth in terms of charitable donations to the fans <laughs> over the uh, right field wall. NC State's turn against Greg Martinez here in the bottom of the fifth. Austin Murr singled in his first at bat, flied out in the third. Line drive up the middle, that's a base hit. Two singles on the day for Murr and two leadoff singles for Murr. The ball is absolutely laced. That's one of those that you hit in the cage. and just feels really good. It hits the top of the screen. And you're thinking, man, I'm going to, if I do that during the game, like that's it. That's where I want to be. Austin Murr had it. Drills it right back up the middle, exactly what you want. Tyler McDonough. A couple of lefties at the top of this order. Switch hitter McDonough here. You go lefty with Murr, then McDonough's the switch hitter. Johnny Butler hits from the left side. Tatum from the left side. So heavy on the left-hand batters, one through four. NC State has had the leadoff runner on in every single inning. In the third and the fourth, those two leadoff hitters came around to score. In the fourth, it was a leadoff home run by Luca Tresh. So uh, he didn't spend much time on the base pass. But Struggle They've had no has been advancing. The leadoff guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Two for nine runners on base, one for seven runners in scoring position. This one hit well. Out to right field. Matulia tracking back. It's over his head. May have misplayed a little bit. Austin Murr will ease into third base. And McDonough slides into second. So NC State second and third. Nobody out. Obviously not there, so it's tough to tell if that ball was hooking or slicing on Philip Matulia. It's good. it's a tough catch either way for a right fielder making your way back. Probably got some movement to it as well, and Matulia just not able to field it. And NC State, you got to think you have to capitalize here. Runners on second and third, nobody out with your number three hitter up, Johnny Butler. This is good an opportunity as they've had all game. Partner, but it's a. Uh, this has been fun. It feels. It feels like a regional final with the way these two teams are playing. We've seen great hitting on both sides. You see Kyle Griffin warming up in the bullpen. Through 14 pitches yesterday in the game against NC State. Yeah, and it's such a chess match too, right? Because both these teams are obviously playing for the same thing, but th they have different circumstances, right, that they're all dealing with. And NC State, of course, up two to nothing, so they can afford a loss, albeit you don't really want to go to that point, but you know that the pressure is on Louisiana Tech, so the, the, the chess match played between these two coaches is something to watch down the stretch of this one. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. I, I think what, what we'll likely see if you get into the bullpens is – Lane Burroughs for Louisiana Tech doing a lot more matchup stuff. Maybe trying to match righty lefty a lot more than Elliott Avent. Avent just the, the, the bullpen for NC State uh, has been very good at the top, but certainly not as deep as Elliott Avent is accustomed to or would like. Butler down to a knee. Good off speed pitch turned in by Martinez. Just two strikeouts today. We haven't seen a whole lot of gaudy strikeout numbers from pitchers in this regional. 1-1. One, one. That's low.
A couple of flyouts for Butler here today. Could use another one here. Instead, he ropes one into right field for a base hit. Murr will score easily. Here comes Tyler McDonough, and he will score. And we are all tied at five here in the fifth. Top of the lineup comes through for NC State. Single by Austin Murr, and a double that was absolutely crushed by Tyler McDonough. And then this one, a laser in the right field by Johnny Butler. Scores both. We got ourselves a whole new ball game. So seven be batters. For Greg Martinez. Seven batters have now gotten hits for NC State. And Martinez at 80 pitches. That will be it. As Kyle Griffin, the left-hander, makes his way into this one. Two-run RBI single for Johnny Butler ties us up here in the bottom of the fifth. Still nobody out. A brand new ball game here. All right, so Greg Martinez's day is done after four innings, was touched around for eight hits, five earned, and 80 pitches. But uh, he leaves all tied five to five. Both these teams canceling each other out so far in this one. Kyle Griffin will enter, and we saw him last night. And when you look at it today, Lane Burroughs really managed the bullpen well yesterday. And Griffin came in, finished the game, tossing an inning. Walked one, struck out one, but didn't allow a hit. Yeah, you mentioned the way Lane Burroughs managed the bullpen. Kate Gibson threw a third of an inning. Kyle Krieger threw a third of an inning. Kate Hodges threw an inning. And Kyle Griffin threw an inning. And So we didn't burn any of those guys. We've already seen two of them in games today. So Krieger for a long time in that early game. We'll get a look at Greg Martinez, who held the fort as long as he could, but the top of this lineup got to him in this one. Leaves with the game tied. He's also responsible for the runner on first base. Here's Terrell Tatum now. First pitch and a called strike. Tatum, one for two. Drove in two on the single, his last at bat in the third. Left on left. Line drive and past the dive of Ray into left field. Back-to-back -back hits for Tatum. And back-to-back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back -to -back hits yeah. for NC State. Four in a row, three singles and a, the McDonough double. It's a nice piece of hitting by Tatum going the other way on the, on the outside. And the ball on the outside part of the plate. Just a soft liner past the outstretched hand of Alex Ray. That's of awakened for NC State. Still nobody out. Torres going to square early here. The pitch outside. Trying to get that winning run to third base with less than two outs. I like the move from L.A. to Avent. Having Jose Torres square around to try and bunt. Gets the bunt down up the third base line. It's going to be foul. Now it's about execution. You're not trying to be perfect. You don't have to get it right down the line at third base. You just need it to go somewhere other than in the air and right back to the pitcher. Anywhere else will work. Ideally, you'd love to have the third baseman field it, but it's not a necessity. The most important thing is getting the bunt down and getting it away from the pitcher. Really 
Speed on the base pass here with Butler and Tatum not bunting and fouled out of play. All right, so bunts out of the question here. Two strikes, approaches thinking opposite field all day long. Hands inside the baseball, trying to get something to the right side of the infield or something to right field. Especially with the lefty up. One, two, outside. Especially with the lefty on the mound. time chess match here's where the little things come into play advancing runners getting bunts down the little execution pieces that you work on every single day in BP or live situations in practice Torres again will stay alive the right idea there that's the right kind of swing his hands tight, trying to hit the ball the other way, just a little behind that one. That's low, full count. It's been a good at bat from Torres. Fouled off a couple pitches. Soaked himself on an advantageous count. Doesn't change her approach though. NC State trying to break this game open. Payoff pitch. Again, fouled out of play. Long at bat here for Torres. Feel the tension a little bit there. Griffin trying to get a look at it. these runners are going to be going on 3 2. Like keeping pretty stationary. There's nobody out. They're going. Torres off to a slow start at the beginning of this season, as were quite a few NC State players, but Torres was dealing with an oblique injury early on. Out and back from that, healthy now. Big spot here. Johnny Butler on second, Terrell Tatum on first. They were moving on the last 3-2 pitch. See if they're going here. Runners are off. And another foul ball by Jose Torres. Runners are just getting their sprints in, conditioning. Tenth pitch of the at-bat. How many pitches have been spoiled with two strikes by Jose Torres? I think it's his fourth one that he's fouled off with two strikes. Longest bat that we've seen in this regional. No question about that. Popped up, and again, out of play. Kyle Griffin, it's just about continuing to hit your spots, not even concerning yourself with how many pitches he's fouled off. Your only concern is 
hitting your spots and maybe what's going on with that hair. Runners off again, and that's high and away. A huge at bat one by Torres, and the bases will be loaded. That is a momentum type of at bat. Your shortstop's at the plate, and he's battling 10 pitches. And on the 11th, Kyle Griffin blinks first, misses wide, and loads the bases for your big catch who's already got a home run today. So Luca Tresh awaits on deck as Coach Burrows goes out there. Looks like that'll be the end of the day after 13 pitches. Griffin unable to get an out. Gave up the single to Tatum. Walk Torres. We'll step aside for a quick pitching change here. End of the day for Kyle Griffin. So Luca Tresh coming up. Here's what he did back to start off the fourth inning. Deepest part of the ballpark, no problem for him. That was his 14th homer of the year, and he's coming up with the bases loaded. The new pitcher, Nick Ellis, out of Keller, Texas, coming in to face Luca Tresh. Nick Ellis making his 15th appearance on the season. Last time out was against Old Dominion in that championship game in Conference USA tournament. Went one and a third with two strikeouts, one walk. He's going to top out in the mid 80s. Not going to be the, the power pitcher from the left handed side, but relies on that craftiness. He's going to face a big bopper, one of the big boppers in this lineup, Luca Tresh. First five batters for NC State have reached base safely in this inning and a big hack from Luca Tresh. He went single from Murr, double from McDonough, two run RBI single from Butler. Tatum with the single, Torres with a walk. Luca Tresh has turned nobody out. NC State inning is kind of taking this crowd out of it, too. It's not been as raucous as it was in certainly last night's game or the early game today. I wonder if there's a little fatigue setting in for the crowd. I mean, this is a, yeah. this is a doubleheader for the crowd, too. And no question about it. It is just, again, just so tough to come out of that elimination bracket, that loser's bracket. It is. And the numbers bear it out. If you start 2-0, and somewhere near 80%, you're advancing out of the regional since the tournament expanded. Two balls, two strikes, bases juiced, and Tresh got under one. Pops it up over towards first. Garcia is under it, and no tag. It's a big first out. It's a huge first out, and I think it was an excellent approach by Nick Ellis, who really seemed to have Luca Tresh off balance all at bat. I mean, big swing to start. Swung right through an off-speed pitch, and then was really out on the front foot. Nick Ellis doing a nice job against, or in his first batter faced. So bases remain loaded for Devontae Brown, who has struck out and flied out so far today. Again, a reminder, you see NC State batting in the bottom of the fifth inning here. They are the home team, despite Louisiana Tech being the host team of this regional so Louisiana Tech will not have 
in at bat in the bottom of the ninth if they are trailing. Good pitch at the knees to Brown, one and one. Good fastball coming inside to the right-handed hitter. Right there on the corner, perfect placement. That's low, two and one. So you got Butler over at third, and Tatum on second, Torres on first. NC State has scored two so far in this half inning. A two run RBI single from Johnny Butler. This one hit well. Out to right field, Matulia back, looking up, and it is gone. Grand slam, Devontae Brown. Devontae Brown with his third home run of this regional. Opposite field once again with the bases juiced. His team needing him to come through in the fifth and he absolutely does. NC State came into this inning down a couple of runs and here they are taking a four run lead. And uh, looks like that's uh, Devontae Brown's family. It's got to be, right? I mean. Man, what a regional Devontae Brown has had here in Ruston. We got, we got tears. We got video coming out. But you are exactly right. What a regional. So it's nine to five now. Keep in mind, Louisiana Tech once led this game four to nothing. But those two home runs off the bat of Patrick Bates have been eliminated here thanks to the huge grand slam from Brown. This boy Tomenci goes down swinging. It was just the second home run given up by Nick Ellis this year. Monte Brown has been has been fantastic in this regional, and, and I think the biggest thing in that at bat, you got a soft throwing lefty on the mound, and yeah, you've got power, but you're going to have to go the other way. You can't pull off and try and pull that ball. And Devontae Brown is on that the entire time, absolutely drilling it to the opposite field. Two to JT Jarrett. All batters for NC State have now come up to the plate in this inning. Ground ball diving stop by Ray. No throw. Pack and batted around here in the fifth. Austin Murr comes back up. He's the guy that got this all started. Single in the top of this inning. That was off Greg Martinez. We've seen Kyle Griffin and now we got Nick Ellis on the mound. Placed in for a strike. 41 pitch inning. 
here in the fifth. You know, we talked about at the beginning of this inning when Austin Murr led off with a single. NC State's had the leadoff runner on in every single inning. It was just a matter of being able to capitalize, and they finally were able to find the combination, press the gas, and get some runs. Grounded to second. That'll finally end the inning. A knock of four. Devontae Brown. Grand slam third home run of this regional. NC State takes a 9-5 to five lead. The one here in Ruston, Louisiana. NC State has broken it open. Six runs in the bottom of the fifth inning. Thanks in large part to the grand slam from Devontae Brown. There you see the Wolfpack fans. They're fired up at J.C. Love. Making the trip. Loving what they're seeing from their team. That's 2-0. and And a few innings away from advancing to a Super Regional if they can hold on to this four-run lead. Looking to join NC State, uh, or excuse me, looking to join Notre Dame as the second ACC team to advance to a Super Regional. Notre Dame clinched their regional earlier today. Dominated their regional. I mean, that's all you can yeah. say about what Notre Dame did up in South Bend. Obliterated everybody and everything in sight, including every baseball that, that crossed the plate. George Corona takes an 0-2 pitch outside. 0 for 2 today with a pair of ground outs. For those, party uh, up on. Go ahead, Rock. Go ahead, partner. Just about to say party up on Rocky Top, too. They're advancing to do a Super Regional for the first time since 2005. And a strike out here. Strike out for Matt Willitson. Let's talk about the ACC. Had eight teams in the tournament. One team is at a top 16 national seed, Notre Dame at 10. A little bit of controversy there, but Notre Dame has advanced. And if you're looking around the ACC, it's been a little bit of a, of a tougher day. Miami was eliminated in the Gainesville Regional. North Carolina was eliminated in the Lubbock Regional. Duke was eliminated in that Knoxville Regional by Liberty earlier today. Florida State eliminated in the Oxford Regional by Southern Miss. So the ACC team's still alive. Virginia is playing Old Dominion. They'd have to beat Old Dominion twice in that one. And Georgia Tech is playing Vanderbilt right now. Jackets would have to beat the Commodores twice as well. The story of the ACC this year is a, is an interesting one too, right, Roddy? I mean, it, so you, you get a, the unlikely heroes at the beginning with Pitt. Notre Dame picked at the bottom of the preseason rankings, as it were, and things just kind of kind of flip for a couple teams. Louisville, Pitt falling apart a little bit at the, at the end of the year. And you get teams like Duke. Teams like Virginia, NC State getting hot at the right time and, and really turning things around. Um, so things kind of flip-flopped a little bit in the ACC this year. Yeah, without a doubt. Duke had won 12 straight coming into that regional, including the game over NC State in the ACC championship to win the tournament as Matt Willitson is cruising right now. Dealing foul ball just out of the strike zone. But when you, when you talk about the ACC, like, I feel like the ACC this year was all about the, the runs, with the exception of Notre Dame. Notre Dame was great from beginning to end. Yeah. Georgia Tech fairly consistent. You know, weren't, weren't didn't sweep a bunch of teams, but never got swept. But then you look at a team like NC State, started 1-8, and eight, got hot. You look at a team like Duke that ends up winning the ACC championship game, getting hot at the right time. You mentioned Virginia. But then on the other side, Pitt was leading the Coastal Division until they had their COVID pause. They get eliminated in the ACC tournament, and they don't make a regional. And then Virginia Tech. I mean, 
yeah. two months ago, Virginia Tech's right up there with Pitt in the Coastal Division. You're thinking, wow, Virginia Tech's going to make a regional. They're the best team in Virginia. And they absolutely had the wheels come off. Something about the Cavaliers towards the end of the year. I don't know what it is that Coach O'Connor does with those boys up there, but uh, they kind of turned it around. You know, to be to be honest, I think a lot of it was was kind of what NC State had. It was an experienced team with a ton of talent coming back. It just wasn't ready to play at the beginning. They had some some important guys struggle, and then started to get excellent pitching performances up and down the lineup, particularly from Mike Vassell and Andrew Abbott. Yeah. Abbott, the no-hitter this year, was ridiculous. Out to Devontae Brown there at the warning track. Makes a catch. A little friendly, friendly nod to the kennel out there. Just showing off a little bit with his team up 9-5. to five. Around the clock, multi-game coverage, scores, and highlights. Check out Squeeze Play available on the ESPN app throughout the college baseball regionals. You got the Wolfpack checking out Squeeze Play right there. Waiting for this one to start today. There's our regional right there on Squeeze Play, too. They were watching their own regional. Yeah, the, uh, oh, man. That game early got interesting down the stretch. I'm sure uh, Mike Rooney and... <laughs> Matt Schick, Chris Budden were locked into what we were doing here. At least what the players were doing here. Yeah, no question. Alabama, they they made some fans' hearts drop, especially with Sam Prater came up in the ninth inning there. He ripped a ball foul that, if it had been fair, would have had a tie ball game. How about Manny Garcia? Did you see him there? <laughs> Jumping into the padded wall. He was best for that one. Tyler McDonald with the big double last inning. Six run inning, six runs on six hits. 0 2, line drive out to left. That'll drop in front of McConnell. Again. Again, the leadoff man gets on for NC State. Six straight inning. We've had the leadoff guy on. He's come around to score now in three of the five that uh, three of the five previous innings. Looks like that's going to be it for Nick Ellis. Ellis, the third pitcher used by Louisiana Tech here, so we'll. See a fourth pitcher used, and Louisiana Tech arms not even through six innings of work yet. It's Cade Gibson coming in, the left-hander to relieve. We'll step aside for a short break. All right, so here's the Old Dominion site. There again, they are hosting on the road in South Carolina. Uh, South Carolina eliminated Old Dominion and Virginia in the regional final right there. Top of the fifth, UVA on top, six to three. If they could win that one, that would force uh, a game seven tomorrow. So, and ACC and Conference USA battling it out in another regional here. Similar story. Yeah. Virginia. Notre Dame already advancing, NC State, Georgia Tech. Half the ACC field left, and Kate Gibson coming in, trying to keep his team where they are so that they have a shot to uh, have another, to, to get to a game where they can eliminate NC State. They're gonna have to come back in this one. He pitched against NC State yesterday. Gave up three hits and two earned runs in a third of an inning. And you and I were kind of talking in the break when Nick Ellis came in and Cade Gibson, more often used lefty, kind of talking through why that would happen. And, and I think some of that was the fact that NC State had some success against Cade Gibson yesterday. So maybe you throw another guy out there and see if he can do a little bit better. But NC State got after Nick Ellis too. If there has been a 
weaker point for this Louisiana Tech team this year. It has been that bullpen. That is why it was so important for Lane Burroughs when he talked to us for his team to get into the winner's bracket. Got off to a good start, but ended up having to play that elimination game earlier today. They earned some trouble here. Johnny Butler at the plate. And, and it is worth RBI mentioning double. in that Louisiana Tech bullpen. See a single up the middle. But in that Louisiana Tech bullpen, they're without one of their best arms, Landon Tompkins, who's not available in the regional. Had an injury to his hand. The conference tournament that has him out. He's tied for the team lead and saves 20 appearances on the season, so they're without him. So one less arm in a bullpen, and any time you get into a regional, you have, you're have you down an arm, especially one of your best. It's, it's always going to be tough unless your starters are just lights out. But you get into your fourth game, you're having to use everybody, all hands on deck. So here's Terrell Tatum, top of this order. Or really, the top to bottom today, everyone's done some damage. Everybody scored. Still trying to move runners over there and get some more runs. You know how dangerous this Louisiana Tech offense can be. Again, they, remember they scored all those runs in game one. They put up a nine spot in the eighth inning against Ryder. Tatum squares, pulls it back, throw back to second. Another square here, gets it down, pushes it up the third base line. Wells, no play over at first. Tatum beat it out. Tons of speed. And the base is again loaded with nobody out here in the sixth. Perfect bunt. Maybe a little firm gave Hunter Wells an opportunity, but Terrell Tatum was flying down the line. Hunter Wells feels this pretty well. There's nothing he can do to get Terrell Tatum. And one way to execute on a bunt. Bunt for a hit. Make it bases loaded. Here's Jose Torres. And he flies one down the right field line. And that's a fair ball. McDonough touches down. Butler scores. Two run RBI double for Jose Torres who was hitless in this one. And it is 11 to 5, NC State. Almost looked like Jose Torres was kind of surprised after it came off the yeah. bat that that one had a chance of being fair, but just sneaks in the line. Doesn't quite clear the bases, but he's not sure, and he's got to pick it up. Is it fair? Is it foul? Oh, I think it is going to be fair. And he's got to get moving to get to second base, and the Wolfpack faithful pumped up with what their team has done. Remember, this team was down four to nothing at one point. Louisiana Tech had all the momentum. A couple of Parker Bates home runs had gotten them going, but ever since then, it's really been all Wolfpack. Still nobody out, bottom of the six. This Getting out of hand pretty quickly here in Ruston. Look, there's, you're still going to have three opportunities at the plate if you're Louisiana Tech. And the way this team has been the entire season and the way the ball's flying out of this ballpark, you're never out of it. But you cannot continue to let this lead grow. Fly ball, right field line. Matulio will watch it get into the seats. Right 
It's been such an emotional season for Louisiana Tech. It's a team that a couple years ago, when their season upended due to the Rustin tornado. Practiced at a high school field all of 2020. Parts of 2020 that they were allowed to practice and play, and then COVID hits. In the fall, they're practicing in a high school field. This is a resilient, experienced bunch. NC State has been the best team in this regional since it started, and Louisiana Tech is going to extend this series. They've got to get going quick. Five for 10 with runners in scoring position and 10 RBIs for NC State. Trash just missed that one, went straight back. The way that he swung, it might have ended up the same place the one before did if he had gotten all of it. That's low. Three balls, two strikes. Regional final here in Ruston, Louisiana. NC State, the team that is 2-0. and If they can hold on to win this game. They will advance to a super regional and take on the winner of the Fayetteville Regional. That is who we are matched up with. 3-2. Round ball towards short. Ray will go to first with it. And run a score. It's 12-5. So Tresh gets the RBI. Here's Devontae Brown. Hit a grand slam his last time up. He's got a runner on third. And Jose Torres. And off speed. In there for a called strike. Last time NC State was in a Super Regional was 2013. And that's when they advanced to the College World Series there. State team is a team that if they do hold on in advance it is going to be incredibly dangerous in a three game format I know Arkansas is the prohibitive favorite to come out of their regional and they're in the driver's seat but the pitching that NC State's gotten and the way they hit the baseball it's going to be dangerous here comes Torres he slides in head first NC State now extends the lead 13 to 5. Dante Brown with another RBI. Not as loud as the uh, four that he got in his last at bat, but incredibly effective. Every run makes the, the climb even that more steep for Louisiana Tech. to Mensik out to left field and running it down is McConnell so four more runs come across for NC State here in the six we are through six NC State up 13 to five welcome back to the NCAA baseball regionals presented by Capital One here in Ruston Louisiana the host team is down right now 13 to five. NC State has scored 10 runs in the last two innings to take the lead here. If NC State were to hold on to win, they advance to a super regional. Louisiana Tech got to get the offense going. Four of their runs coming off the bat of Parker Bates and his two home runs today. New pitcher on the mound for NC State is Chris Villeman, the freshman from High Point, North Carolina. Yeah, we saw the second year freshman on Friday against Alabama. Pitched one inning then, only threw 10 pitches, struck out two in that outing. But it is, uh, in all likelihood, his the rest of the way. He, his last 
outing before this regional was against Duke in the ACC championship game, went four and a third, did not give up a hit or an earned run, walked one while striking out six and throwing 54 pitches in that one. Looks like we're gonna get a pinch hitter for Louisiana Tech as well. Be Darius Myers here. From Seminary, Mississippi. 44 at bats this year, a 250 average. Trying to spark something here in what would be a very, very big comeback. If you're looking at comebacks, this was a team in. Louisiana Tech that was down eight to nothing going into the bottom of the fifth in Southern Miss, an elimination game in the conference tournament. Came back to win that game in extra innings. They were down five to two going into the bottom of the ninth against Southern Miss in the second elimination game against them. They ended up winning that one six to five. This would be their biggest comeback, certainly most important comeback of the season if they're able to do it in this game. One, two to Myers, and swung on and missed. Villeman starts his outing off with a strikeout. Sticks, first strikeout tonight. I don't know about unhittable, but yeah, it's pretty close to it. 92 miles an hour coming to you from the left side, right on the black on the outside corner. That is tough to hit. Top of the order, and Taylor Young has walked and has grounded out twice today. And we have mentioned a couple of times this NC State team and how the top end of their pitching staff has been good, but it's, you know, Elliot Avent told us it's really been five guys. It's been Reed Johnson, it's been Sam Heifel, Evan Justice, Chris Villeman, and Matt Willardson. Those have been the primary arms through the course of the season that have gotten them to this point. Those high leverage situations and told us how good they had been. Without them, they wouldn't be in this situation. And, Certainly, they're going to need some of these other guys the deeper they go in this tournament run, but those five at the top have been excellent for NC State all season. Those five second, guys, the only five guys on staff with more than 15 innings. 32nd NCAA appearance for NC State in their program. Tenth in the last 11 years. Popped up, shallow right, could be difficult, and it drops in a fair ball. Young will stay at first, gets away from Torres there. Young will hang out over there at first base. That was a no man's land. Perfect placement just out of the run on, of everybody who was getting after it. Austin Murray, JT Jarrett, Devontae Brown all having a conference around where that ball landed just inside the line there, down the right field line. This crowd well aware of not only what's at stake, but who's at the plate. Man has done damage all weekend long. 
And he's two for two tonight. That's Louisiana Tech is able to come back with a, a massive comeback. And Wells puts a charge into one. This ball's way out of here. And that'll fire up the crowd, a two-run homer for Hunter Wells. His 14th of the year. And he just keeps tacking them on. That cuts the deficit to six here in the seventh inning. I was about to say is we're getting towards the time of the game where some of these seniors Unless they're able to have a massive comeback, this could be their last time taking in a bat in the Love Shack. And Hunter Wells doing his best to make sure that he gets at least one more. Business-like home run from the third baseman. Give his team a little bit of momentum. Okay, you were down eight, now you're down, now you're down by six. Continue to chip away, see if you can get back in this thing. Put yourself in a position the further you go to mount that comeback. Parker Bates has already left the yard twice today. He's two for three. Five RBIs. Her ball fouled off for a two-step. Villeman kind of hung that one. Look at the, the difference tonight. First three games struggled. Had a home run, but this one, three for three, two homers. All of his home runs are the two-run variety. That's one of those uh, little nuggets that kind of highlight the how, uh, how funny baseball can be sometimes. And with that two-run home run, Hunter Wells now has 100 hits this year. One, two to Bates. Good defensive swing. It's a great defensive swing. Let's take a look at the Parker Bates home runs. Unloads on this one, the right field. And a hanging breaking ball. He sends that one off the scoreboard. One, two, three for Louisiana Tech. Been getting it done all year, but tonight, six for nine. Three homers now, seven RBIs, and all seven runs scored. Outside could take. Feel the energy of this crowd swelling back a little bit after that two-run homer for Wells. Just jolting some life back into this crowd that has been here all day long. Remember, Louisiana Tech had to come out of that elimination game against Alabama earlier today. It's been a long day for these fans. A long day for the players. Popped up. Shallow left. Tony Butler coming in. A little miscommunication out there, but Butler hangs on to it as Torres hits the deck. And it's all smiles as long as you, you get an out out of it. Saying, did you call that? Yeah, I called it. I called it from the very beginning. Oh, I didn't hear you, man. I called it too. I see Torres is saying he's got it. Johnny Butler saying the same thing. And Torres wisely takes a seat and lets the left fielder handle it. And, you know, your point about the crowd is, is, is very true. They've been here all day, and they were almost – begging Hunter Wells to get something going for him. He hits the home run, and now it's the same thing. You can hear the cries just 
asking for this Louisiana Tech team to give them something to make them believe that they can continue to mount this comeback. Oh, 92 up in the zone to Netterville. Strike three. Villeman was living up in the zone in Netterville and got him to go around. Two strikeouts for him. But Hunter Wells puts a little life back into this crowd. His 100th hit of the season, a two-run homer over the left field wall. His team down 13-7. CAA Regionals coverage for all 16 sites continues tomorrow on ESPN3 and the ESPN app. For more information, visit NCAA.com, the home for all 90. NCAA championships. Contingent of NC State fans loving what they're seeing. Hunter Wells cuts the deficit a hair. Still a long way to go. Down 13 to 7 to NC State, who, if they are able to hold on to this win, they would advance to a super regional. Here's a bunt from JT Jarrett back to the mound. And no play there. Not sure Gibson was expecting that. Jarrett had his game plan ready to go. Sure did. Got the lefty that's falling towards the third base side. And then the bunt, he's got to wheel back around to try and make the play. JT Jarrett just too fast. And worth noting, he's had some defensive changes for Louisiana Tech. Number 10, Logan McLeod has come into shorts to play shortstop. And behind the plate, George Corona's day is done. And uh, looks like you've got Kyle Hassler, number 32, behind the plate for Louisiana Tech there. So another leadoff man gets on for NC State. All seven innings. Been living on the base pass. This NC State team has been incredibly hot. Nine hits and 31 at bats. The opening game against Alabama, 14 hits and 38 at bats. In the game against the first game against Louisiana Tech, and then in this one, 16 hits and 33 at bats. <laughs> That's almost 500 batting average today from NC State. Two two to Murr, fouled out of play. Austin Murr, two for four today. A pair of singles in the first and the fifth. Gibson deals well outside. How about Hassler? The throw down to second. Sliding past the base is Jarrett. He's out. It's that little wet turf there still from the rain. A little bit of an adjustment having to deal with the slick turf after the rain. JT Jarrett beats the throw, but coming in a little too hot there. Can't stop himself on the bag. Scramble to get back. It's a nice job of McLeod of following up. All right, there's a couple quick outs now. As Austin Murr goes down swinging. So wait, make way for Tyler McDonough. It's two for three today. Single and a double in his last two at bats. Got 
batting 349 on the year. Nobody aboard now. And he lines one back up the middle and a base hit. Good job by Bates to keep that in front. The ball can skip in the outfield and it's a little bit wet. It almost did. Oh, skidded away from it, looked like. Left fielder, number 14, Johnny He's able Butler. To it. Hold McDonough the single. McDonough with his third hit and four at bats, four official at bats today. Johnny Butler now. You know, it feels like a while ago, but this Louisiana Tech team started out with a 4 nothing lead after two and a half innings. And NC State put up a six spot in the fifth and four runs in the sixth. It's been a later inning onslaught from this NC State team. Runner takes off, the pitch was up in the zone, gets past Hassler. Oh, almost hit Butler. Hassler scrambles over there to get it. I thought for a second there, McDonough may think about trying for third, but Hassler yeah. did a nice job of getting over there. He was off on the pitch. Two one inside, and that also gets past Hassler. And now up to third will go McDonough. Like Hassler was just crossed up there. He went down to his knees, expecting a different pitch. It was right between the legs. And maybe he just misjudged that. Yeah, I think that's what it was. He just misjudged it. Three one. That's in there. Called strike two. Crowd getting into it. Big point in the game. Payoff pitch. Slider outside. Ball four. Lane Burroughs team has fought so hard all year. It's had a little bit of magic in that Conference USA tournament, looking to try and summon some of it here. a lot of credit to these fans. This place is still fairly packed with spectators. Not many of them having left despite Louisiana Tech being down. Pitches up. The runner takes off. No throw. So Butler in there easily. Now second and third. Got a feeling NC State's just going to keep the gas to the floor the rest of the way. They know the offense is capable of putting big runs up. That is easy in a Tech's offense. Yeah, there's no, there's no way knowing what's on the other side. You can, you can relent at all. I mean, JT Jarrett started off this inning with a bunt single of six right. runs. Good pitch. Scott Tatum. And the Bulldogs will have five, six, seven coming up as we head to the top of the eighth inning. A summary, NC State, the team that started out 2-0 in this regional, is up big, 13-7. 17 hits. Louisiana Tech had a 4-0 lead mid-third, and Willitson was 
really good on the mound today. Six innings. Every player for NC State has a hit and a run. Devontae Brown, a huge grand slam in the fifth inning. NC State scored 10 combined runs in innings five and six. And the host team, Louisiana Tech, down to their final six outs to get six runs in this game. Here's a swing from McConnell out to right center field. And this one's going to get off the base of the wall. And McConnell coasts into second with a leadoff double here in the eighth. These next six outs may be the hardest six outs NC State is going to have to get all season. This Louisiana Tech team is not going quietly. A couple of runs last inning on a home run by Hunter Wells. Cole McConnell starts this one off with a double and with every hit, every base runner, this crowd is going to get more and more belief. They can pull off what seems like an impossible task. So that'll bring up the sophomore Kyle Hassler now. And he swings at the first pitch. His first at bat of the game came in for George Corona as the defensive substitution behind the plate in the last inning. Hassler, 233 average this year. This is his 61st at bat. Three homers. effective when the ball's been down and on the corners. It's gotten in trouble when it's gotten elevated a little bit. Let's see who goes here with two strikes. Up in the zone and he lays off it. Just at the knees, a called strike three. Fans don't love it, but the second strikeout of the night for Villeman. Tell you what, it's a pretty nice job of Luca Trush and selling that thing. And at the very bottom of the zone, if not a little bit low, but Trush sells it, and Travis Reininger behind the plate. Brings him up. Here's Philip Matulia. Two for three today. Big cut through a fastball at 91 from Villeman. Matulia singles back in the second and the fourth. Struck out his last time up. Just outside. These Louisiana Tech hitters need to remember is you can't get it all back with one hit. Let the baseball come to you. Let the game come to you. You don't have to press here. Mm. Elevated Big. the fastball and Matulia swings right through it. Big at bat. Got that big uppercut swing. The high fastball can work, and he almost hit him there. Back-to-back -back strikeouts for Villeman. You were on it with the swing of Matulia. An elevated fastball had been effective in the at-bat. 
time. Just above the belt on the outside corner. A hair over 90 miles an hour is enough to get Matulia. And they're now one out away from stranding the leadoff double at second base and giving Louisiana Tech its last hope. The Louisiana Tech program that has been through the ringer over the last two years. Tornado back in April of 2019. A COVID season that was cut short as was everybody's. And a great catch out there by Torres. How about that? Winner of our regional has a date with the winner of the Arkansas Fayetteville Regional. Arkansas, of course, the number one overall national seed this year. They are in a battle with Nebraska right now in the regional final. In the top of the fifth inning, if Arkansas can win that one, they will win that regional, advance to the Supers. And Nebraska can win, that'll force a game seven. There's a little bit of disbelief here as Kate Hodges, the new pitcher, on the mound for Louisiana Tech. From Brookhaven, Mississippi, 6'1", 215. Pitching to Jose Torres, who just made a ridiculous catch to end the top of the eighth. And he's down 0-2. A couple of good pitches from Kate Hodges. He's making his eighth appearance. He's not been one of the more used arms in this bullpen, but... He is thrust into a major situation against Torres, Tresh, and Devontae Brown. And check out this catch. I mean, that's as good as it gets at shortstop. You get a soft liner, shallow left field. He's able to make the snag. Two, two. Foul tipped off the mask of Hassler. Was that Hassler we heard say ow? <laughs> <laughs> Caught an ow on the uh, on the field microphone. I guess it had to have been Hassler. Foul tipped and Hassler hangs on to it. Hangs on. This was clearly a ball, but off-speed pitch up in the zone. Torres offers that. It swings right through it. I think he may have gotten a piece of it. See, the way he looked back would suggest that he did. But either way, Hassler holds on, and it's out number one. It's Wolfpack offense. I mean, they have been relentless this entire weekend. And it's been really fun to watch NC State and the way that they have played this, this entire regional. One of the hottest teams in baseball coming in. We knew that. We expected to see some fireworks. And, man, have they delivered big time. They absolutely have. And the most impressive thing is it has been every game. They have had yeah. innings where it's been a little slow, but even Louisiana Tech... Behind, uh, or when they faced Sam Highfill, were cooled down, only held the three runs. But NC State has just been all over it in every single game. He's the best offense in the ACC this season. And it's been a complete team effort up and down the lineup, really throughout the regional, but certainly today. Every single member of the Wolfpack has scored. He's been impressive for the events team. And again, despite their slow start, NC State earned six series wins, including four sweeps against ranked opponents. An incredibly solid defensive team this year. That 983 fielding percentage was good for second best in the ACC. And 
that one is low. Hassel was ready to throw down a third, but it'll be a walk for Tresh. And the other thing, too, we haven't talked much about, this NC State team, they know how to play and win on the road. Their road winning percentage is one of the best in all of college baseball. They yeah, were 17-5 been... and five playing away from Raleigh this season. Been phenomenal. Capital One player of the game, Devontae Brown. That huge grand slam in the fifth inning. Really jump-started this offense. Got the scoring going. Ten runs in two innings. say Devontae Brown certainly deserving of that. Honestly, you, you, you could put up the scorecard for NC State on the wall, throw a dart at it, and make a case for whoever it lands on yeah. to be the player of the game. It seems like <laughs> Tyler McDonough's had an excellent game. Johnny Butler's been all over it. Terrell Tatum's got three hits on the day. I mean, look at that lineup. JT Jarrett down at the bottom has three hits. Has come around to score as well. It's outside. Nice pick by Hassler on the backhand there. Hassler's had to work since he's come in the game. Two, two. This one hit well. Out to left center field, looking up. Bates at the warning track. It's off his glove. Luca Tresh sliding head first into third. Bates almost had a play on it, but man, Devontae Brown is feeling it here tonight. He flirted with another one. It's this one in the deepest part of the ballpark out to center, and Bates does a great job of getting back. Just barely misses it at the wall. Tresh has to hold up to see if that ball's caught. It's not. He motors around the third base, and Brown takes the 2-2 pitch and drills it off the wall. You're right. He is feeling it. That was kind of that's one of those heat checks. Let's see if we can get one out to center now. Boy, to Menchik, to third. Here's the play at the plate. And they got him. Heads up play by Hunter Wells to go home with that one. Keep it a six-run ball game. I like Tresh being aggressive, but you tell your guys, you got to see it through to the left side or, or at least away from the third baseman. It's hit to third base. It's just too easy for that guy to pick it up and throw. It may not matter being still up six runs, but... Yeah, I think they're going to I think they're going to challenge this. The, the throw from Wells was up a little bit, and Hassler had to hold it up there for a second. And Tresh got a good head for a slide in there, and he he was underneath the tag. I just not sure when it was applied on his back. That's a good call there. All right, let's see if we can parse this together. The thing that's going to be tough here is when does he hit the plate, but we can see where he's tagged for sure. He's first tagged mm, on the side there, it looks like. This thing will give us a pretty good view. I mean, it looks like Tresh is still behind the plate when the glove comes down. The question is, when did it touch him? But remember, you have to have indisputable video evidence that he is safe. So, while we don't know exactly when that tag was applied, because we don't know exactly when the tag was applied, you can't overturn it based on what we've seen. Actually, looks like it catches him. Yeah, that, that looks pretty yeah. definitive that the tag is applied. He's well before home plate. And it's probably going to stand. Or maybe even be confirmed. So 
So the call in the field is out at home, and it looks like we have come to a decision here. And the call is going to stand. Talk about keeping your foot on the gas. Yeah, you can't take them home. You might as yeah, well use why them. Not? You got two of them. The aggressiveness at third plate, the aggressiveness from the dugout and coaching. Hey, let's challenge it. We got a bang bang play. Why not? Let's see if we can get it overturned. Now, come on. What I got to do? Definitely thought I had that one. <laughs> It was a lot of fun to catch up with, man. He's uh, always great to talk to. The, in 25th year at NC State. So, we'll have a pitching change here. Kate Hodges' day is done. We'll step aside for a quick pitching break as Tyler Fallis throws a couple warm-up pitches here in the bottom of the eighth. All right, welcome back. New pitcher on the mound is right-hander Tyler Fallis, Sulphur Springs, Texas. Senior on this team who has been with this club since 2017. 17th appearance this year, nine innings worked. And, you know, you're kind of getting down to that point, Roddy, where we're seeing some of these guys getting their last collegiate at bats, their last collegiate appearances on the mound. So... Could have been a nice hat tip from Coach Burroughs there to put Fallis in the game. Fallis is a guy that in 2020 was in the weekend rotation. Had four starts in 2020 before that season was canceled, making his 17th appearance. And you're right. I mean, the, the finality of everything, it starts to yeah. sink in. and. It's great to see some of these guys get another opportunity in their collegiate colors. And I've been in the situation where you're staring your last game in the face, and uh, it is quite the feeling to be able to put it on one more time and, and go out there and compete a little bit. What's the feeling after it's over? Like the immediate feeling? Uh, it's a lot. It depends on if you win or lose. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> and in what fashion? But but I, I think a lot of it doesn't sink in for a while, man. To be honest with you, I think the perspective that that comes with age changes things. And and I don't say that as you know you have to be in your 30s to to look back and remember. But as soon as you get done, you either are immediately focused on the next thing, or you're. You're focused on the next season, and for these seniors, it's either, all right, I'm going to go get a job, or all right, I'm going to continue to play baseball. And It's only when that next season, or maybe even the season after that rolls around, that you're like, wow, I am really never going to play whatever your sport is, whether it's football or baseball. I'm never going to play that sport again, collegiately or competitively. Tyler Fallis, 3-1 count to JT Jarrett. That's well up in the zone. Ball four. I love it when you get you hear the little nuggets from the coaching staff. That sounded like the NC State coach is saying Austin Murr. Hey, get yours. He's struggling keyhole it. That means you look for one pitch in a keyhole, the one spot that you want it in, and if you get it there, unload. Five tonight. Bases are loaded. Two gone in the eighth. And a ground ball to short. McLeod bobbles with it and doesn't get a throw off. That was a little bit awkward there. Runs going to score. It's 14 to 7. I think McLeod was just way too indecisive there. He couldn't decide where he wanted to go with the ball. And then when he finally did, couldn't get the ball out of his glove. Let's watch this again. He grips it, looks to go to second, and maybe it was the fact that JT Jarrett got down to second so quickly that he didn't expect it and sort of bobbled it coming out of the glove, and it cost him a run. 
right, so that'll bring up McDonough, and the inning will continue. McDonough can blow this game wide open. Three for four tonight. Double a single score, two runs. Interested to see how they score this. They still have not had the official scoring on the hit from Austin Murr. I'm going to give him a single. Oh, okay. It was a long discussion there, it seemed like, from the official score. I, I mean, I don't know how you can give an error on that. You really don't have a choice. I mean, nothing they didn't happens. throw the ball. <laughs> Yeah, nothing happened to give him an error. It wasn't booted. He didn't throw the ball. Nothing happened. Uh, so I guess you, you kind of have to give him a single. Look up and down this lineup. Six NC State players with multiple hits. Five NC State players with multiple RBIs today. Johnny Butler, one of those. He's on deck, but Tyler McDonough has done more than his fair share of damage today. One, two. Down in the dirt, blocked by Haslam. By the way, Arkansas and Nebraska are all tied three to three in the bottom of the fifth. Again, the winner of this regional Looking more and more like NC State is going to go on to face the winner of the Fayetteville Regional. Two, two. Hi, right, Chopper back up the middle. And this time McLeod takes it himself to second. So that will do it. Last three outs for Louisiana Tech. It'll be 9-1-2 coming up next at the top of the ninth. Welcome back as we head to the top of the ninth inning. Roddy Jones, Sam Ravage. Roddy, for a program that has been through as much as this program has been through, to go from a tornado wrecking your entire ballpark, two years later, a little bit over two years later, you're hosting a regional. Can you just comment on what you have seen from this Ruston community here this weekend? Well, well, it's tough to put into words. I think you can tell uh, how much this team and their success means to the community in Ruston. I mean, Lance Burroughs told us as much. Uh, the, the This entire community had to rebuild after that Ruston tornado in 2019. This stadium was quite literally rebuilt after that tornado in 2019. And this team who was talented and experienced a couple of years ago, stuck together through a tornado, through practicing at high school fields, getting kicked to the middle school field, the little league field when Ruston High School had to practice, not being able to get on their home field until February of this year. That was the damage. I mean, Lance Burroughs told us guys could have transferred and they didn't, and they put together an incredible season. It is looking more and more like uh, it is going to end today. There's where they had to practice, Ruston High School. It's been incredible, man, and, and while it looks like it's going to end today, Lance Burroughs and this Louisiana Tech team have a lot to be proud of what they accomplished this season. No question about it, and when they did rebuild, they rebuilt big. This is a facility that is uh, immaculate in what is kind of an arms race in college baseball for facilities now. Uh, this is a really, really good one. They did a good job. Other part of this partner is this is quite likely and potentially the last time we're going to see guys like Taylor Young yep. taking at bat for Louisiana Tech and all that he's meant to this program over the course of his career. 2018 All Freshman Team in Conference USA, 320 hitter for his career, over 209 hits. And uh, I, I am happy we will we will see we will see Hunter Wells again. Now, look, the thing that you don't know, Taylor Young and all these guys have the ability to come back for another season. So, what will that decision look like? Hey, 
It is kind of fitting, though, where you have Young up, and then you'll get to see Wells, two of those players that could have left, but decided to come back and stay with this program and help bring the first ever program regional to Ruston, hosting for the first time. One hit high into the night sky. And there, the catch is made by Butler. All right, so kind of flipping the switch here, talking about NC State. Hypothetically, if Arkansas does come out of that regional, what would you look forward to most in watching an NC State Arkansas Super Regional? Well, I think I think seeing this NC State team against the arms that Arkansas has to throw at them. I mean, this NC State crew is as good on offense as anybody, and Hunter Wells taking his last at bat at Louisiana Tech most likely. But when you talk about NC State, the thing that they're going to have to avoid against Arkansas, or the thing that they're going to have to get, is starting pitching performances like they did in this regional. And starting pitching performances, quite honestly, like they have gotten the past two months from guys like Reed Johnson, Johnston, Sam Heifel, and then uh, Matt Willardson, they've got to get deep into games because this, this bullpen really is Chris Villeman and Evan Justice. Outside of those two, it's a little bit thin, so it's going to be a great matchup. Torres, backhand stop, throw to first, not in time. Wells beats it out in what could have been his last at bat in a Louisiana Tech jersey. this one deep in the hole and motoring down shows off the wheels getting the first base out of the ball Parker Bates getting one more attempt another guy incredible career this could be the last time we see him likely will be the last time we see him what a game to finish off his career if this is indeed his last game Two homers, one in the first, one in the third, both two run shots, then the triple in the fifth. He's got five RBIs tonight. It's a little bit low. And going back to NC State and, and their, what looks like they're going to be their matchup against Arkansas. If I'm Arkansas, now, you've been the best team in the country all year long, so you're not afraid of anybody, and everybody you face in a Super Regional is going to be good. But two of the teams I would certainly not want to draw in a Super Regional would be this NC State team and another team from the ACC, Notre Dame, because they have been hitting the cover off the baseball in these regionals. Bulldogs down to their final strike here in the top of the ninth inning. Chris Villeman set, and the pitch almost turned around and backhanded it. Torres picks it up and throws to first, and NC State advances to a Super Regional. Hate to see it in for Lane Burroughs and this Louisiana Tech team. The season they've had, what they've meant to this community, the fans sticking around, but what can you say about Elliott Avent's crew? I mean, they dominated this regional, winning the first game against Alabama, eight to one, the second game against Louisiana Tech, eight to three, and then 14 to seven to clinch their spot in the Super Regional to await the winner of the Fayetteville Regional. This NC State team has been playing as well as anybody in the country over the last two months. And they are going to get what looks like a date with destiny in the number one team in the land. But for now, Elliott Avon's crew is going to enjoy winning and getting to a Super Regional for the first time since 2013. And again, that 2013 year was a year of destiny. You can see the respect there from Elliott Avon. And 
congratulating Coach Burroughs. A nice tip of the cap to the crowd here in Ruston, Louisiana. And a town that has been through so much. Mutual respect between both these teams. It's so great to see. And that 2013 team of LA Davents went on to a college world series. There are some of the tickets punched to the Super Regional so far. Their fellow conference member, Notre Dame, just breezed through their regional. Tennessee has advanced, and now NC State has and advanced to a partner, Super Regional. We, we've talked about how well NC State hit all regional. NC State's pitching, though, in this regional yeah. was fantastic. The start from Reed Justice, the start from Sam Highfield, the start from Matt, or the, excuse me, the relief appearances from Evan Justice and Chris Villeman. The start today was fantastic when you look at what, um, excuse me, Willatson did today, Willitson. It, it, it's just an incredible performance on the mound. They used five pitchers all regional. A really nice job by NC State on the mound. It was a, it was a complete team performance. I mean, what can you say about what they did today? Congratulations to the NC State Wolfpack as they will advance to a Super Regional. Congratulations and a hat tip to Louisiana Tech to being such a good host. And congratulations and a huge, huge thank you to our crew in Ruston, Louisiana for the job they did all weekend long. Roddy Jones, it has been a pleasure for all of us here at ESPN. Again, your final score, 14-7. I'm Sam Ravage saying so long from Ruston.